about uh, the work we have done on the form form week. And based on the IGS uh, region, uh, small gene is a big genome. The question we are asking is whether the South African form form mutation is actually a clone. Uh, I don't think I really need to go to the details of explaining how the form form week looks like but it's a perennial weed, a, per a perennial um, hub from the family Asterisia. And you notice how, sorry, and you notice how fast growing it is out competing all the species in the place that it invades. And it uses a disturbance related strategy. And some of the characteristics that make it very uh, invasive include the underground rhizome so that makes it uh, very persistent underground. It acts as a food storage and it gives it a quick recovery during, uh, especially after fires or after mowing. Uh, it has wide agroecological uh, distribution. It has invaded almost every part of the country. And another feature is that it produces a lot of fruit and seed, which are weed dispersed, and other agents act as a mode of dispersal. Uh, it can attach to your hair, depending on the kind of hair you have. <laughs> it can attach to your shoes, accounting for long and short distance dispersal. Uh, this is the distribution. This goes up to 2010, and I'm sure it has continued to invade new areas. Uh, the natural distribution is mainly in South America, mainly Argentina and uh, Brazil, Bolivia, Paraguay, and Uruguay, and it also has patches in Central America. The reason we are doing this work is because there are two agents, uh, bug control agents, that are at advanced stages of uh, testing in quarantine in South Africa. This is the flower feeding moth and the drips. And the flower feeding moth uh, uh, impacts on reproductive capability, while the drips acts on the new growth, thereby impacting on growth bigger. And why we are doing this is because the efficacy of these two agents we depend on how more specific they are and the efficacy of the full genetic uh, diversity in South Africa. So the objectives of this study were to investigate the genetic diversity of corn corn wheat in South Africa, to determine the possible origin of corn corn wheat in South Africa, so as to do effective sampling in the native range, and also to, de to determine whether it was a single or multiple introduction, because multiple introductions will introduce new genetic diversity. And we sampled all the areas in South Africa where the weed has invaded, uh, ending up with about 52 samples. And we also included 14 samples from Argentina and Brazil that were collected during a survey of uh, biological agents and their own. And after we extracted the DNA using standard methods, we amplified the ITS region using uh, published uh, primers. And then we sequenced the ITS region to give us the full sequence of the basis along that region. And then we used uh, Stomatandis Chopila as uh, a gene bank sequence to compare the results and to root our tree. And this is the tree that resulted from that data. And I want to draw your attention to the fact that all the South African uh, specimens and the Argentina specimens are in one uh, place. And I also want to draw your attention to some two specimens from Brazil that are clustered separately. But one of the Brazilian specimens is clustered together with the South African specimens. Uh, in this table, I want to draw your attention to the fact that the, the data matrix for which co consisted of a total of 765 base pairs. That's quite uh, a big uh, sequence. But you notice that 
All the South African specimens are the same. All the 52 uh, South African specimens are the same. And I would also want you to notice that there are, there are polymorphic sites in that uh, in the data matrix in those sites of the South African specimens. And these sites uh, indicate that they are polymorphisms that either an A or a G, you all know that the nucleotides we are calling here are alpha nucleotides, either A, G, C, or T. But at these sites, they are polymorphic. And this is an indication of uh, incomplete concerted evolution in the ITS region, mostly common with recent invasions. And for these two uh, Brazilian specimens, you notice this mutation. And at this region, at the base pair region 269 and 357. But you find that the Argentinian specimens are also very similar. Most of the, the, the Argentinian specimens are very similar to the South Africans. And even those that you may see that there are mutations, or the bases that are called in this region are also called in some of the copies of the South African specimens. Uh, for, for, for this picture, I want to show you what I've just talked about, the polymorphism in the, like in this region, you notice that there are two bases that are called as opposed to this sequence where the base, either, only one base is called. And this is what I just talked about in complete concerted evolution in the ITS region. And we call them intra-individual polymorphisms. And this is an indication of a recent invasion. Uh, we went ahead to do the haplotype network analysis. And you will notice that amazingly, the, the, all the South African specimens are grouping together with Argentinian specimens and the one Brazilian specimen. And this, uh, all these are shared in one haplotype. Uh, the two Brazilian specimens are sharing another haplotype, a different haplotype, and there is one um, Argentinian specimen that shared a unique haplotype. And we noticed that when we looked at the geography of this, uh, this uh, specimen, it's different from the other Argentinian specimen. And we find that this data tells us that there is no genetic variation in the ITS region of South African specimen, and this may be due to low mutation rates. And uh, a study by Smid and Schilling tells us that the ITS region mutates at a rate of 1 to 3 percent per million years. So, and we, this is evidenced by the fact that we only found three mutations in the native region. And this confirms the, the fact that the form from wheat is a very recent uh, invasion that has not had time to accumulate mutations that can be picked up by the ITS marker. And we all know that the form from wheat is spread in very highly by, uh, by wheat, by, uh, by seed production that is spread by different modes of dispersal. And so we are asking why the low genetic variability in the form of in South Africa, a wheat that spreads so much by seed. And we came up with the idea that this wheat could be spread, uh, producing seed by apomixis, which is uh, production of seed without meiosis or fertilization. And so you end up with offspring that is genetically identical to the parent. Uh, and indeed, a study by Fakout et al. in Argentina, in northern Argentina, has confirmed that the form from wheat in one population in Argentina is actually a community. And these are uh, embryos for stages in the embryo uh, sac formation. And so it has been confirmed in Argentina that the, some populations are actually a community. And so we went ahead to uh, oh, sorry. And apomixis is actually not a new thing. It occurs in many species, about 400 species, uh, spanning about 40 plant families. And actually in Asteritia, it has been uh, confirmed with about 22 genera. These are just examples of 
weeds that are producing by appendixes. And these three families, uh, Aserichia, Poetia, and Rosicia, constitute about 75% of all plants that are produced by appendixes. And therefore, to, to, to We, we asked ourselves, why do we have uh, alien um, apomixes in alien weeds? Or why should alien weeds be apomixes? Because this will provide reproductive assurance, especially in the absence of pollinators, because when alien weeds are introduced into the country, they are not only introduced without their natural enemies, they will be introduced without their adapted pollinators, and therefore it acts as a pre-adaptive uh, and colonization strategy. And so we, we have found that most of the has has been um, visited polyploid. Most of the apomixis uh, plants are actually polyploid. And the same study by Papo et al. confirmed that some populations in Argentina and Paraguay are actually diploid. Triploid and tetraploid, that's a lot of polyploid in Argentina in the native range. And so we have tested the, uh, our pom pom here in South Africa. Although this study is still ongoing, we have confirmed that some populations are actually triploid. These are specimens from 2010. And uh, we find that they are either having 32 or 34 chromosomes. That is different. And we also wanted to test the populations here in South Africa where they are actually a committee, whereby we went uh, and did some experiments around the team, whereby we cut the, 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 uh, the flowers at about half the, the height of the flower buds. <coughs> this is to attempt to remove the unders or, if, or mimic the <coughs> masculation. And then we bat the, the, the flowers. And then later we wanted to test whether there will be seed formation. But we found that this method is not actually very effective because of the biology of the Astelicia flowers, whereby you find that the, the flowers that are growing at the edges usually mature faster or earlier than the ones in the middle. So when you cut, you don't actually remove all the anthers, so you cannot exclude pollination. But we wanted to know at what stage uh, flower seed actually uh, occurs in uh, the pom pom weed and test the different uh, stages of flowers. These are very young flowers, these are fairly mature. And these are the capitula that are, are just starting to open. And we find that even at that stage, the individual flowers are still closed. And so we, this picture I'm just showing you the, the, the individual flower. This is the ovary and this is the individual flower. And when it matures to the fruit, this is the fruit of what most of us call the seed. But this is actually the fruit containing one uh, ovary per fruit. And uh, we, t we wanted to test uh, pollen viability and pollen morphology at that stage. And what we did is we collected pollen from this flower. And from the same flower, we collected the embryo. And for the embryo, we tested the viability using tetragonium salt. And for the pollen morphology and vi viability, we tested this in fruity gel and acetophan and semi. And the results we got are that. You, uh, the, the pollen size is not uniform. We got an equal pollen size. You can notice the different sizes of pollen. An indication mostly of polyploid uh, species or polyploid individuals. And we also know that even when there was some similarity with acetophamine uh, staining in pollen, it's not 100% staining. So the pollen could still be viable, but it's not 100% viability. But when we stained the edges, we found that they are fairly viable. You can see the red staining. And although this study has not yet confirmed apomixis, one thing for sure is that 
the embryos are fairly mature before the flowers open, and we, could con con we, we can conclude that there is no vector mediated pollination at this stage. And so, from these uh, results, we can tentatively conclude that the form from wheat in South Africa was a single introduction of a small identical powder population that is extending the state through uh, a community seed production. And that the likely origin of the form from wheat in uh, South Africa is Argentina other than Brazil. And it would actually be from one province in Argentina that is oriented where this study, the previous study was done, that confirmed a triploid population which is a politic. And therefore, we have said that the control agent sample from Argentina would be equally effective on all South African uh, populations. But before we can conclude these studies, we are still going on with uh, AFNQ work that is amplified fragment length for the This is a whole genome wide scanning. And we have already tested the primers. We have uh, 12 primer populations. And we have come up with at least six, which we can carry on with our next analysis. And tentatively for the results that we have got, these are just uh, two primers, primer combinations that I'm showing using uh, two South African specimens. Uh, this is the, 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 the fragment size of base pairs, and this is the intensity of the bud. And you find, find that for this trace, that is one specimen, is fairly identical to this trace, another uh, South African specimen. This is one primer combination, this is another primer combination, and you can notice the same. So we hope that these results will confirm whether or not uh, the, the South African specimens are actually clonal and give us an indication of the origin of uh, South African form form. Uh, we are also going on to determine the freight level, to confirm the freight level. We have so far found that they are triploid, but we continue with these studies. And recently we got additional uh, specimens from Argentina that are triploid and uh, deployed. They have already been confirmed in Argentina at the sea of Adri. And these are going to be our reference material for grading studies. And these are pong pong specimens we have uh, established in our greenhouse that we are we will continue with uh, a community experiment. Thank you. Time for one question. Anyone? So, I more comments than a question. But, you know, ITS polymorphism sometimes indicates hybridization. And you're putting forward an Apomixis uh, hypothesis. So, you, you don't think there's hybridization happening maybe between intraspecific hybridization? Uh, if, if the weed is producing seed by Apomixis, which is vegetative, we don't expect. Uh, hybridization at this stage, but hybridization would be actually occurring in the native range mm -hmm. because the apomysis is facultative, both vegetative and sexual. So you think that polymorphism is reflecting from the pre-invasion? Yeah, I think uh, the, 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 the weed could have been apomictic even before it was introduced, so it is just continuing its Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.